Tesla basically confirmed my theory that I reported on earlier this year, which is that they are switching to lithium iron phosphate batteries for all of their standard range vehicles globally. So it doesn't matter in what country you are. In the US, of course, there's only one standard range Tesla, and that's the Model 3, which now is officially using the lithium iron phosphate pack, which does technically still get 262 miles of range. Not bad at all if you consider with LFP, you can charge to 100% daily, and the cycle life is supposed to be much, much higher. It's safer. It's cheaper. There's no cobalt used in it at all. The only reason I was a bit hesitant on reporting on this being confirmed or not is because the weight did not change for the specs page on the standard range Model 3. That might just be because Tesla didn't want to take the time to update it. They did update it in other countries, but not in the US. Maybe they'll get around to that later, but it might explain as to why the shipping times for the standard range Model 3 have been pushed out so far, because now we know all of these LFP batteries have to be brought over from China. But based on the Monrani stickers that we've seen from LFP Model 3 deliveries, it sounds like these vehicles are still being built at the Fremont facility. So even though the batteries are shipped in, I don't believe that every standard range Model 3 was necessarily built at Giga Shanghai, and now they're importing it here, just importing a component of the vehicle. But it says a lot about how Tesla sees this as being the most practical battery for their more affordable vehicles, and Elon has said on multiple occasions that in the future he thinks like 70% of all batteries are going to be LFP, and The Limiting Factor is a great YouTube channel that's talked more in depth about LFP, but essentially there's a lot of design patents that are expiring within the second quarter of next year, so it's very likely that Tesla and other battery suppliers are going to start building up LFP batteries within the United States as well so that they can make them at massive scale. They're perfect for energy storage systems like Mega Pack and Power Walls because they are heavier and they're less energy dense, but because they're cheaper, it doesn't really matter if a big battery that you strap to the side of your house is slightly heavier because it doesn't need to go 300 miles on a charge or anything like that. Same story with Mega Pack, which should free up more batteries to be available for vehicle deliveries, which is excellent. But personally, my only suggestion here is that if Tesla is going to be shipping tons of lithium iron phosphate batteries over from China into the United States market, it would honestly make a tad more sense to bring back the standard range Model Y than it would to put them in the standard range Model 3. I get that that vehicle has been around for a while and I'm sure it's probably one of the most popular Model 3s available given the long range Model 3 estimated delivery is still for this year. So I imagine less people are ordering that because once you start getting into the $50,000 price point, that's when people just want to go with a Model Y anyway. But to make my case, if they've used these LFP batteries in a standard range Model Y, which I believe is cheaper to build than the Model 3, thanks to the casting press technology, you can still technically charge more for it than a standard range Model 3. Probably you could get away with it now with inflation for like $45,000, $47,000. And yeah, the range will be a lot lower, but the profit margins, I think, will still be fairly thick. And we know they're comfortable with the Model Y having, you know, under 300 miles of range because they're doing a standard range option in China. So finding out that Tesla is finally moving over these chemistries for the entry-level models is a good thing, and there's even rumors now that Tesla is securing orders from BYD for like 10 gigawatt hours worth of batteries that are going to be lithium iron phosphate, plus BYD has several factories within the United States. That means we should hopefully be expecting some more standard range Teslas in the future, and of course the biggest consumer of LFP batteries is likely to be Tesla's more affordable vehicle coming in a few years, the one that I've alluded to possibly using a single piece casting for the front and back. At Battery Day, they confirmed that would be using likely 4680s structural, but the 4680 batteries would be based on the lithium iron phosphate chemistry, so you're getting great weight savings, very, very high cycle life, and because the vehicle is still overall smaller, you should be able to get 270, 280 miles of range. But overall, I think this would be a very, very common option for people as soon as Tesla is able to build enough of them. I'm sure the chip shortage isn't really helping with this right now, but this type of battery chemistry should allow for healthier profit margins for Tesla, and I think an easier transition for a lot of people making the switch to electric, because I always think that it's a bit of a hard sell when you tell people like, okay, the range of the Model 3 or Y is 320 miles or 350 miles, but then you tell them like, yeah, but you don't want to charge it up to 100% every day, so just charge it up to 80 or 90% most of the time. Standard range vehicles are much, much easier to grasp if you realize that you're actually getting that full range capacity and you have less degradation in the 
the long term to worry about. So it's proven to be very, very successful for them over in China, and I think it could be just as successful over in the United States. Again, as long as the margins are good. And as always, I'm curious to hear what you guys think about LFP becoming the standard range option. Would you love to see it come to more Teslas in the lineup? I personally, like, you know, this would never happen, but I would love to see Tesla make a, you know, single motor Model S with an LFP pack so that they could provide all of these great interior options with the big center display and the yoke and the ventilated seats and all that. And okay, you get like 300 miles of range, but it could start at like $70,000 or something like that because I don't care as much about the performance or the 400 miles of range, but I love the Model S design. I love the practicality and I love the interior features. So if there was a way to make it cheaper, I'd be kind of interested. Let me know what kind of crazy ideas you guys have for lithium iron phosphate down below. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Take care.